Sweet Derek, are we live? We are live. Coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada, this is The Naturals Pod. Welcome to this episode of The Naturals Pod. I'm Uncle Kyle, respectfully, seated next to me on the sticks. Sweet Derek. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Today, you have stepped into Uncle Kyle's Mojo Dojo Casa House, and we are going to be discussing Barbie, (laughs) because what you do not know is that Sweet Derek and Uncle Kyle gave each other an assignment to go watch the movie and then come back so we could talk about it. So here we are. We're going to get into it. First impressions. I am shocked at how much I enjoyed the movie. Clearly, I didn't even grow up with G.I. Joe's people. Yes, I did have some action figures. Shout out to Street Sharks. But no Barbies for Uncle Kyle. So... Considering the topic and Barbie's known the world over, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to go to a country on this planet and not find somebody who knew what a Barbie was. They are universal. But I didn't consider myself someone who would be a fan of the movie because I never played with them. My sister sure had plenty of them. And my first take on the movie, the opening sequence. Can't stop doing that. They were actually living in Barbie houses. These houses looked exactly like the playhouses that my dad put together for my sister on Christmas Day back in, I don't know, 1994 or something. And the artwork was incredible. I do have to give them a nod for that. There are some critiques that I have, but I will say the cinematography, the set work, the costumes were fantastic visually the movie was incredible what do you think what do you think sweet Derek yeah I agree as far as visually the movie was phenomenal um the colors the stages the props all really on tier I'd say the costume designs were really on point it's pretty hilarious how they put like wardrobe of like certain Barbie characters on like the little screenshots of the wardrobe they were uh wearing which is pretty funny uh, the coloring was really good, and I mean, honestly, I chuckled, you know, several times. Yeah, yeah, I had I had quite a few laughs. I was also pleasantly surprised by that. I'm not even going to be mad at it. If you're hating on this movie, then, I don't know, you don't have a pulse. My one major beef with the movie, spoiler alert, in case you didn't know, this is all one giant spoiler. If you haven't seen the movie, you need to go ahead and shut this off right now. They did not, one single time until the end credits, play Barbie Girl by Aqua or Barbie Girl, and I'm not sure what the what the artist, I believe it might have been Nicki Minaj, and they did a remix to it, but they played it at the end credits. They didn't play it one time throughout the whole movie. Like, that's just insane to me. How do you not play Barbie Girl? Everybody knows Aqua. Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. Ah, 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 yeah. Everybody knows it. Everybody. You see him chime in. I didn't even have to ask her that. That just happened. <laughs> that just happened. So I couldn't believe that. Um... The cheese in the beginning of the movie was incredible. Like they were playing it up huge. And I don't know how much they paid Ryan Gosling for the movie. Please look that up, sweet Derek. But they did not pay him enough. This man could not have more passionately portrayed a plastic man. He not only was playing the character, he was living in that character Ryan Gosling was Ken in this movie and it was incredible. So he is reportedly paid 12.5 million. Not enough. Not enough. That performance for what he did. Once again, if you want to hate on this, that's your business. It was incredible for someone who is being paid to look like Ken and not only be absolutely chiseled. He yeah. Was he was jacked. Rocked up, he man. was jacked. Yeah. He, he was, was jacked. jacked and have all the, the mannerisms. I mean, let's be honest. Ladies, Ken is a secondary character in the Barbie world. Barbie is queen, and rightfully so. She is the doctor. She is the lawyer. She is the policewoman. She is the construction worker. She is the firefighter. She is the veterinarian. She is the baker. Barbie does it all. She's the president. She's the president. She is the president in the movie. But, um, yeah, Ken is pretty furniture, and arguably... Ryan Gosling has been pretty for furniture the majority of his career. I mean, please don't kill me, Ryan, but half of your roles involve you staring off into the distance with a smoky <laughs> gaze and just 
intense looks. I mean, Drive. Have you seen Drive, Sweet Derek? I have. Yeah, great movie. I love that movie again just because cinematically, the way it was shot, the cinematography was it was fantastic. It it draw it drew you in. You didn't need like any kind of crazy plot. You didn't need to know his entire backstory. It was just a great movie. So in that right, I mean, take it as a compliment, Ryan. I'm not totally shitting on you. And you're a good looking man. I'd love to be sitting here just like this. Eight pack and all. Bang. He was tanned up. I'll even do the bleached hair if that's what you guys are into. I'll be looking like I'm on a beach somewhere. So another thing that I found wrong with the movie Basically, it starts in Barbie Land. This movie establishes that Barbie Land is a fictional world that exists outside of the real world. The confusing part for me is Barbie at one point goes to the real world because a fracture has been made and whatever membrane separates the two. It's like different dimensions almost kind of. Okay, so answer me this, sweet Derek. How do you go from being a tiny plastic Barbie doll that is maybe a foot tall in real world but in Barbie world, you are, what did they call her? Stereotypical Barbie. Stereotypical You are Barbie, stereotypical, yeah. blonde haired, blue eyes, look good in whatever outfit you wear, driving a pink convertible Barbie to back to the real world. Doesn't it make sense that you would go back to being a doll if you went back to the real world? Well, see, I took it as the dimensions, right? So in our world, we see them as a plastic toy non-moving being but in this dimension they are real living human being so that version of the human being from that dimension can transport into our dimension as a physical human being not as a plastic figure good christ what a mind fuck yeah. Why are you doing this to me right now? all i'm saying is you can't go from plastic to to human in barbie world to plastic so what basically what you're saying is is all of the scenes that are in Barbie world are essentially stylized version where it portrays them as humans, but realistically they're little dolls going, Hey, I'm Ken. Yeah. I'm hey, really, I'm really, yeah. I'm really mind twisting me and kiss. going like deep no, in like a dimension type crazy theory, which is what I've, that's how I saw it. And that they're going for this movie was like a fucking acid trip. People. It was, it was in, in the best possible way. The co- the co- like I said, the set design, the costumes, the colors, the the way the movie was shot, and it was ultra ultra high definition at the theater I went to. I don't know if you did XD or I don't even know if they're showing that in XD. They usually reserve. I don't that know for if it was, but movies. it was. I mean, yeah, it was good quality, man. As far as the filming and everything, it was great. And I would argue that it, like if you watched it at home on your 4K television, it would be insane. Oh, it probably well. pops beautifully, dude. Again, as a as a movie nerd and aficionado that I'd like to consider myself in the movie world. Uh, great job, man. Great job on the set design, the colors, the cinematography is very, very good. So I went into this, um, with the mindset, I'm not going to hate on this. I want to watch this movie. This movie is being critically acclaimed, so it must be kind of decent. Now, that being said, there have been some real stinkers lately that I was super excited for. And sweet Derek, we went to watch these together. Matter of fact, we got to be disappointed in unison. Which one came first? Did we watch the Batman first or did we watch Nope first? Cannot remember. We'll have to check the release dates. We watched Nope the day it came out. I love Jordan Peele's movies. I think they're great. I think he does a great job. Us is one of my all times. Loved that movie. It was a great because I'm not really into a ultra disturbing horror movie. So that kind of tiptoed on the line of really good suspense and horror movie all in one. What did you think about Us? Uh, Us was phenomenal, so was Get Out. I mean, they're both uh, amazing horror films and psychological thriller films. I mean, obviously, if you're a white person, Get Out makes you feel like you're just terrible and you feel ashamed of yourself. Oh, but... yeah, still a great film, though. <laughs> great film. Uh, great Us film. had a good concept, too, though, you know? Yeah, and so by that right, and also, to give credit where credit due, I did like a lot of the visuals in Nope, but... The story and the manner in which it was executed was god awful. It was one of the it worst movies I've ever seen. And at one point when we were in there, I actually, and this is very rare for me to want to do this, I wanted to walk out. We wanted I, to leave. We wanted to but leave. I, I was just like, so bored. But I was just hoping that, okay, this is going to pick up eventually. There's going to be action. We're going to see what they're talking about this whole movie. And then nothing ever happens. It didn't. So it what, didn't. The, what, what the movie should be named after, it's perfect because does something ever, is something ever going to happen? Nope. 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 
nope, nope. It's a terrible movie. So yeah, that was bad. Um, that doesn't take away from the fact that he has films that I enjoy. Nope was terrible. And then the Batman. I love superhero movies. I love Batman movies. I've seen probably all of them. Can I remember the name of every actor that was in them? The plot line, the villains? No. But I remember the high points. Because um, those movies have been going on practically our entire life. Batman is a staple. So when they were coming out with a new one who was more of a recluse and he had the almost rat rod Batmobile that he put together all by himself, which looks sick in the trailers. I was pumped for that movie. And then he comes out and he goes, I'm Batman. Get out on the crowd in the name of the law. I'm sad, Batman. I'm, I'm Robert Pattinson. Batman. I'm Batman. I'm going to come fight like, you. You need, to have a, you need to have a growl. You have to have a Batman voice. Where is she? Like, you have to, you got you to gotta bring some gravitas to the role. Because when you're playing Batman and Bruce Wayne, yes, people, you're playing two characters when you are doing that role. You have to be able to do both. You have to be Bruce Wayne, the reclusive billionaire playboy who scoops up entire troop of ballerinas and takes them on a fucking yacht cruise. And you have to be the broken, guilty man who watched his parents die, who's this rogue superhero out trying to save Gotham City. You got to be able to do both. He did not. But also, Paul Paul Dano, Dano, I'm not sure how you say his name, Dano, Dano. Uh, I thought he was great. I thought he played that character great. I thought they could have done the movie really well with him in it had the Robert Pattinson Batman. I mean, Colin Farrell as the Penguin was phenomenal too, Also, man. correct, yes. I think that was the ultimate disappointing part is that they really carried the movie and Robert Pattinson... I like some of your movies too, buddy, but you sucked as Batman. You were terrible. You were terrible. <laughs> so back to Barbie. The movie turns at a certain point when they reveal that there is a difference between Barbie land and real world and a character played by America Ferreira and her daughter. I do not know the name of the younger actress. Um, they essentially have kind of a rough mother daughter relationship and the daughter's kind of an angsty teen who is against the establishment and the patriarchy and doesn't like women being objectified, which is fine. We're fine with that. We're fine with that. Just don't shove it in my face. I, I am. I agree with you. If you want to be a respectable woman with a high valued career or something high powered, or if you want to go into politics, I am with you, but not every woman wants to do that. And as much as you might hate the skanks, they exist and they have 300,000 followers on Instagram and work from their phone. So, I mean, who's really doing it right No, I'm just kidding. Shout out to powerful women out there. Lawyers, uh, doctors, surgeons, executive chefs. Anything to add, Derek? Powerful women that you, that you love and respect. Yeah. I mean, I, I am all about that, dude. I, I don't, I mean, maybe as a man, this again, this is where you could be like, oh, you're blinded and you don't see it, but it just doesn't feel like in most cases that is how it is anymore. Maybe in those high power positions, it is still horrible like that. But uh, I'm all about it, man. I'm all about women in power, CEOs, things like that. I know someone that is a doctor and she is an amazing human being and she crushes it at her job and is always working hard and kicking ass. So I am totally always all about that. Um, I mean, what I would guess is that as watching the movie, uh, you have first of all, you have to take it as satire for yes, sure. Because yes. if you this do not, is it a will, satirical film. Yeah, if you do not take it that way, it's gonna melt your brain and it's gonna take you in a weird, like woke, crazy world. And that is the thing where I've seen on Twitter. And again, I think Twitter's the cancer of social media. You are hearing it first from me. Cancer of social Ex media. known as Twitter because it's all politics and just angry, miserable human people. And they were on there saying it's like, oh, it's. You know, they're just throwing feminism down our throats and it's anti-men and this is just disgusting, blah, blah, blah. But if you and most of these people are like, I walked out of the movie. But if you would have stayed through the movie, you would have seen how it circles around and it actually all makes it sense. It did resolve well. So basically the story went, uh, Barbie goes to the real world to meet up with her. Huh. 
This is not the greatest way to say it. Owner or the girl who had her when she was in doll form, because apparently you can go from a doll to being a human in a fantasy world to coming into the real world as that fantasy yeah. human she, and showing yourself in front of your. She was looking owner. for her Andy. If you guys have seen Toy Story, yes, correct, Bang. correct. So coincidentally, her Andy, which I cannot remember the name of the character in the movie, shame on me. Uh, actually works at Mattel, which is the company that owns and distributes the Barbie brand. They have a scene. Will Ferrell is the CEO of, of Mattel, and they go into this boardroom. This man is holding pink drumsticks for a five to ten minute scene, and they never get explained. He is holding pink fucking drumsticks for 10 minutes and they never go, this is because I like to drum or I'm going to throw this at you. There was no purpose for them. They literally put them in there. He was very funny in the movie, though. And then honestly, for me, as far as comedic gold, and I heard there's been a lot of memes and I haven't really dived into the Michael Sarah dude as Alan was absolutely amazing. Hilarious, amazing. Dude. You made the like movie, a, Michael Sarah. A normal, nerdy looking dude. Like, we're, um, I'm just Alan. I can't match up with all these buff Kens was hilarious. Was dude. there a doll? Was there an Alan doll previously? Or is that something they made up on the fly for the movie? I don't know. We got to look that look up. That but that it, up. it is funny because there's just the random dolls in there. Like the, the pregnant doll. We, oh, we discontinued that. Oh, my God. We will get we will get to that a little later because we're trying to move through this movie chronologically. So the Will Ferrell character who plays the CEO of Mattel is in a boardroom with his board members yelling and screaming at them and being kind of, you know, typical fat cat, big corporate guys, how they've made them look in movies for years. Although only recently they've made them look like suave, interesting men, rich men. So shit, just a quick men. side note to Alan is indeed a real Mattel toy. Alan was made after Ruth Handler's son-in-law and was known as Ken's best friend. Mm. So when did he come out? 1964. Fucking shout out to Alan. Shout out to Alan. You are almost 80 years old. No, 60 years old. Oh my God. My math is and terrible. And it's funny because they made Alan so he could fit in all Ken's doll, like the Ken doll's clothes. So, so they're interchangeable. They can accessorize <laughs> Ken and Alan, best buds. And if you get two of the same outfit, they can match. Look at that. Hilarious. Ken and Alan having some dude time. So Barbie goes, meets Eric, America Ferreira's character, meets Will Smith. Experiences that the real world. Will Ferrell, not not Will Smith. You Will, just said Will Smith. Well, <laughs> Will Smith could be the CEO of the company too. He wouldn't have been as funny. Will Ferrell. I don't know why I said Will Smith. So she discovers that the real world sucks, which we all know because we live in it. It's depressing and sad, and people are kind of shitty sometimes. Um, but then she takes. So at some point, her and Ken separated. Ken discovered a bookstore and discovered what the patriarchy is, which is what they described in the movie, which is to Derek's point, very feminist. But like I said, this was all set in a heavily satirical tone. So if you are somebody that was offended by this, I walked out of the theater. They were hating on men. Then you're a fucking idiot. Like stay and watch the end of the movie. This all rounds out in the end. I promise you kids. I promise you. So he disappears back to Barbie land. Barbie collects the America Ferrer character and is like, you're coming back to Barbie land with me. And they go back and Ken has taken over. Ken is like Brett Michael Michaels. Is that the guy's name? He was like the lead singer of, of white snake or poison or some shit. He had that. He had that reality TV show love show. Brett Michaels, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Brett Michaels. I can't remember what the name of the reality TV show was, but just a corny rocker guy. He's got on a vest that's lined with fur that's leather on the outside. It said, correct me if I'm wrong, Kendom Saloon, and it was called the Kendom now. It wasn't Barbie Land anymore. Um, but he was just dripped out like a total douchebag, and he had all the Barbie houses, all the Kens, so in case you didn't know, other than Sweet Allen, all of the men in Barbie land are Ken's. All of the women in Barbie land are Barbies. They are just the different kinds of Barbies. They all fall into their different category. And then Margot Robbie plays the stereotypical Barbie, which, I mean, you couldn't have picked somebody better for the role. She does look like a Barbie. Now, now, now I will bring this into light because most of the podcast listeners won't know this is I oh, absolutely Christ. drew. I drool over Margot Robbie and I think she's a top tier woman. So as Kyle and I and another gentleman are playing disc golf, Kyle says, I don't get what the fuss is about her. She is not that hot. 
That is what? That is what? That is a lie. What? I I don't, I don't get agree all the fuss. The phrasing. <laughs> I said that. I said I don't get what all the fuss is about. I didn't what say she's not that hot. Fuss, I dude, said phenomenal. to me she's not that hot, which I'm sure will just damage her <laughs> ego horribly and she will cry tears and eat half a tube of pre-made cookie dough that you leave in the meat locker. Hey, you're room. one of the reasons why she made this movie cuz she doesn't feel beautiful cuz you don't find her beautiful. I highly <laughs> doubt that. <laughs> I'm just saying that's not my taste. I enjoy many flavors, and she is not one of them. She is the mug cream soda of the soda world. Whoa, dude, that is an insult to dude. me. That to is me, an insult to me as well. To me, she, she could be your top tier crispy she McDonald's a- Coca Cola. She is the A&W of root beer, my man. And it's funny because there's just be a lot of angry people right now in the chats and the comments. Chat out, throw your how tomatoes you Let us from know. the comments. I need to know if you agree with me or Uncle Kyle because Let I it think rain. Margot Robbie is top tier, and the fuss is a valid reason to fuss over her because she is amazing. And if you don't remember that scene in Wolf of Wall Street with her and Leo DiCaprio, go rewatch that. Remind yourself because you will easily remember why she is so attractive. Let it rain. Let the hate rain. She's a good looking woman. Shout out Margot Roby. I do good not. Good actress, ad- too. Good actress. I, I would agree with that because Americans don't do other white people accents well, if that makes sense. Passing for British. People who are from Australia and New Zealand just want to murder us regularly because that is an accent that is because there is a distinction. And if I can find a video, I will put that up because I can't tell the difference. I am also terribly slightly deaf, so that might be a part of it. But the Australian accent coming out of a woman's mouth is like nails on a chalkboard to me. That's an immediate See, minus no, three. No, this is crazy. That's an this minus is crazy, three. I don't like dude. it. It is an attractive an accent minus as well. I, no, I, yeah, I, crazy. Different taste, Derek. Yeah, Different taste. Wild, I'm saying dude. I love the movie. She was this great in the wild. movie. Don't yeah. be mad <laughs> that I am slightly bashing your dream woman. I mean, I didn't say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say dream woman, but she's one of your tier. dream. You top could have tier. a roster of dream women. She could be one of the dream team. Charlize Theron, you always had my heart. Shout, Shout out Charlize Magic Theron. Johnson, dream team. So they go back to Barbie land. Barbie land is in shambles. Ken has taken over. And because men are stupid pigs, they have ruined the place. And they now have the women serving them beer. Were they calling them brewskis in the movie? They I can't were, remember. Yeah, I got Bring these brewskis. Brewski. Check Bring out my brewski. mini fridge. I got a mini fridge now. And it was like the Ken, the Kendom Saloon or something. Correct. <laughs> and the women had essentially been brainwashed. There's a lot of subliminals in this movie. Honestly, I go to the movies to be entertained. I don't I try not to let them offend me or sway my way of thinking. You could watch a movie and be like, I don't agree with that, and that's fine. But to be so upset that you have to A, get up and walk out of the movie that you paid for, and B, go on the internet and tell people about it, or even worse, C, talk to people about this in public, about how you are outraged you are at a fucking Barbie movie. What what are you doing with your life? What is it that you were not able to complete or get involved in that could have taken up your time better than you complaining about a Barbie movie? What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, you should go into this with those expectations of exactly what it is. It's not some kind of secret surprise. Now, I will say, like, if you take some scenes to heart, I can understand where they are coming from, but you cannot take it as a real thing Um, because, you know, there's a movie about toys. It's like when you and I go see Transformers, Derek toys. It's supposed to be fun. You're you're now granted. Was that was it PG-13? I I don't I don't pay attention to anything, people. You need to know this. It was PG-13, wasn't it? Because there was some slightly subjective subject matter. I'm going to go ahead and take a shot and say it was PG-13. No way it was PG. Um, But really, it wasn't to me. It wasn't dirty. I will say a lot of the things that they talked PG-13. about. PG-13. Yeah, PG-13. I will say a lot of the themes as far as relationships between men and women that they talked about probably are going to go over a child's head. If you're taking a six, six to 13 year old to this movie, they're probably not going to understand what's going on. But on the flip side of that coin, they're going to have fun because the movie is poppy color, funny roller skating, singing, dancing, and all that. It was a production. So the kids will still like it. 
it wasn't vulgar, and there are some themes that are just going to go right over their head. What are you going to do about it? It's probably better off that way. I mean, just the, the, the couple things, though, for me to just quickly point out uh, that really bothered me is I think it's hilarious that the daughter in the movie had the lines of anti-capitalism and against the she establishment, was. and we don't want to get you trying to take our money. The daughter was ultra-feminist. They had her. I'm sorry to cut you off, sweet Derek. No, but they had her in, in the scene that basically introduced her to the movie. She had a little bodyguard sixth grader standing station like 20 feet away from them that stopped Barbie from going to their table. And I'm like, this child needs to join the CIA because if you picked up immediately that that was a threat or that that was somebody that was going towards your ward, top notch security work. But she goes up to the younger daughter and she's wearing baggy jeans and like a really loose shirt and uh, hoodie and just ultra, ultra feminist right off the bat. Ultra toxic feminist, I should say. I know feminists. I know women who believe in having their own rights and aren't shoving it down people's throats or being all crazy about it. Oh, shit, we're going to get canceled for saying that. Oh, well. No, but I mean, what, I, what I'm saying is I'm not even necessarily talking about the feminine side of her. I'm more of like the capitalism thing because to me it's a joke. You're sitting here saying, oh, anti-establishment capitalism. But we're in a movie, watching a movie that you are built on capitalism. The whole point of this movie is to draw and take people's money and watch us to take your money. That's what it is. So why are you trying to be like anti-capitalism and against the establishment? It's like, that's what this movie is doing. You are a big corporation this movie selling wasn't a, a movie. Because they did that. And then they also, not even lightly, shitted on Mattel, the company that owns Barbie. But I feel like that's probably all a part of the script because they're trying to break the stigma that men control companies, that the product is predominantly for Yeah, but women. What, a, what a joke Arguably is... Arguably singularly for let's women. Let's be real. They're probably still a if bunch of old men that are on the fine. board of Mattel that are controlling that, Kyle. You know what I mean? Like that Absolutely. Is That's don't, what I'm don't saying. Don't try to fool me. Like. The, it, once again, if you took the movie in a satirical con context, it was great. It was great. And it rounded out really well. Essentially... The Barbies banded together. Now, this I don't agree with. This is where I wouldn't want a young woman watching this movie. They essentially had a scene where the Barbies lured the Kens to the beach and were sitting by the fire. And they're, oh, I love you. And you're so handsome. And the Kens were playing guitar. So the, the women were wooing them and making the Kens feel like their advances were doing really well. And then right when they feel like they had baited the hook, the Barbies got up and switched places. And now the men are all confused and frustrated. No, I thought she liked me and she was digging my John Mayer jam that I was playing on the guitar. Can you remember what movie they were or uh, song they were playing? Uh, it was like the uh, I'll have to look that up. We'll have to look that but, but, up. But, but we'll plug it that, in right there. The thing bang. that just bothered me that was like, we're going to we're going to wait until they're all the way proud. And then we're going to just act like we don't care. And we're going to they were just jump on their cell phones. And then they start talking to other guys and like, because we can make them jealous and feel that. And I'm like, this is horrible because this is why society and relationships. This part has a real meaning to me because this is why relationships and things are so horrible. Dating is so horrible and terrible in this state of the world. And I will always I will argue that maybe I am a broken man with things that have happened in my personal life. But I feel the dating world and relationships and the uh, sanctity of sticking together. You know, you're a team, you and her or he and him, however you date. Just it's this is the the things that they just put messages into people that it's just like the the importance and care of a relationship and being like, you know, caring and loving to each other is just fucking right out the window. Agreed. But that one, makes me sad. But once again, sad. but once again, for me, I'm not going to be swayed or influenced in my actions by the Barbie movie. But my concern is with young women and even young men who see something. It just creates a certain dynamic in your mind on relationships where. Uh, I mean, there are plenty of movies that did some damage when I was a kid, but for the most part, your parents and older people and your personal experiences dating as a little boy in middle school and giving her the little note. Oh, do you like me? I like you. Will you go to the social with me or whatever they call it? Do they even have dances anymore? Now, I can't ask that question because I don't want children commenting in the chat about their middle school dance, but I feel like they probably still exist. Um, yeah, I'm sure dance still exists. And again, look, I'm not attacking specifically the Barbie movie. I'm just attacking our society because that is a society thing at this point. There is no there is no more care 
in relationships anymore. It's like, oh, I'm going to make him jealous. Or how many boyfriends can I have? How many yeah, girlfriends can it, I have? And it, it's, it's just like, it's just a, a bad shitty, stereotype. Yeah, it's just a shitty way to look at it. And that is why dating and everything has become so hard in this. Day Agreed. Age, you know, uh, by the way, the song that they were singing was pushed by Matchbox 20. Pushed by Matchbox 20. Shout out to Rob Thomas. Haven't heard from him in the longest time. Yeah, but I mean, you kind of feel bad. You kind of feel bad for like the Ken, you know, Ken character, Ryan Gosling in that moment because you're just like, oof, I know how that feels in real life. But I will say one of the most probably eye opening things to me in this world and, and what made the writing actually good. And again, for all you morons on Twitter and stuff, there's I walked out. This is fem- anti man and feminism down our throats. Burr, burr, burr. When it rounds out the beauty of the movie to me. And this is this is me as a straight male. And someone that doesn't have the mind of a woman, it actually brought it out really genius to me that the Kens in Barbie land are the women in the real world. And that translated very well to me because now you see how they feel. You know what I mean? Like the guys and the players and and just kind of how women are treated in society. But also, that makes a lot of sense. But also in an extremely satirical sense. It all of this is overplayed. So if you're reading that as this is what they literally mean and they're trying to indoctrinate us, then once again, you're an idiot. Um, But but I did pick up on that as well. I will agree with you. There was a slight role swapping, whereas Ken Barbie's the doer. Barbie always has a good day. Barbie's once again, like I said, the beginning, a doctor, a lawyer, a baker, a surgeon, a helicopter pilot, astronaut, all of those things. And Ken is. Looking good in his beach shorts at the beach, waiting for Barbie to come so they could play some volleyball. So, I mean, it is that part of it is funny to me, too, because typically in older movies with the same thematic structure, women are the eye candy. Men are the doers, drivers of plot, so on and so forth. And it was reversed in this. So but also if you get mad at that ultra small dick energy like don't be mad about that it's a movie about dolls for little girls why would the man or any of the men be the main character in a movie about dolls for little girls yeah i think people just take entertainment a little bit more than what it's meant to be now if a director or writer comes out and kind of explains well that's exactly what i meant then that's kind of extreme and i get i get but i think they've openly said at this point it's a satire it's supposed to be entertainment you're supposed to laugh it's supposed to be funny it's not supposed to have some crazy underlying message where it's supposed to like brainwash people or shove feminism down your throat or heavy heavy or heavy you know? satire yeah. like if you watched this is the only like parallel line I can draw where you're like, that is like overly done. You're supposed to know it's satirical. If you've ever watched the producers uh, with Nathan Lane, and I can't remember who the other actors were in that or the Birdcage with Robin Williams yeah, and also movies. Nathan Lane, yeah. like everything is super overdone and, and, Over and wild top. and and exaggerated. And it's great. That's what makes the movie. That's what makes it interesting. That what's what make, that's what makes you want to watch it. So to wrap things up, the Barbie movie was great. Uh, Derek and I discussed this before we did the pod. He enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Was the the plot was messy. The plot was messy. They shoehorned the America Ferrera and her feminist daughter situation in there. Yeah, they could have built that character up a little bit more because they kind of did early on, and then they kind of just shoved her kind of the side. Yeah, they could have right? developed the plot way better. Yeah. But I do like how they went back to Barbie Land. There was a little Ken v Barbie thing and and a resolution and. All of the Kens and Barbies saying, we just want to be Kens and Barbies and we don't want to be assigned to one role. It was ultra cheese, but also that's the way you have to end that movie. It's a movie about Barbies. Yeah. And shout out to Barbie breaking a billion dollars at box. Record breaking. So what are we? So just to end this on the note, what are we what are we rating the movie from a from an A to F scale? What are we giving it, buddy? Mm. I got to portnoy it because if you're getting an A or above. That's a really great movie. That's a movie I'll watch multiple times. But I will say, I did enjoy it. And it was well executed. There were many, many things that I liked about it. I'm going to give it a B. And that is a respectful B. I enjoyed the Barbie movie. You heard it here first. I enjoyed the movie. What is your score, sweet Derek? Uh, man, pulled it out of my mind, dude. I'm giving it a strong B. I would. I That's can make why an we're friends. I can make an argument to a B plus. I but almost I just did the feel plus. like there's just too many things with the plot that kind of just don't stick out. But as far as a fun, enjoyable movie, something they're going to laugh at, really enjoy. And I could really see how like children and uh, women would really love this movie, especially yep. growing up with yep. the Barbie dolls. It's a it's a great film. It is worth the watch. 
And also, if you are not a Barbie, because I am not a Barbie fan. Again. If you're someone that is aware of Barbies and you want to go watch a funny movie that has really good cinematography and cool visuals, check it out. Good date night movie, too. You know what I mean? Guaranteed winner, unless you're dating a goth girl. Bless them, too. Because they're going to hate all the pain, for sure. Their their little eyes are going to melt. Anyways, that is all the time we have for this episode. We hope you enjoyed our movie review of Barbie. We're going to get into more of these in the near future. Let us know what you think in the comments. Did you enjoy this? Is there a movie that you would like Derek and I to watch? It doesn't even have to be in theaters. You could pick an old cut like Ghost Dog or something that's totally off the beaten path. We will watch it and review it. And until next time, I'm Uncle Kyle. That's sweet Derek. See you later. Thanks, guys. Later. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Naturals Pod. Please remember to follow us on your Twitter and Instagram accounts at The Naturals Pod. Do you have what it takes to join the Natty Nation? Like and subscribe to find out.